Hello, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for your July monthly forecast for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you're new to my channel, I'd be delighted if you would subscribe or click on the like button. Also, if you want to download your free natal horoscope, see the link beneath this video and discover all your natal positions. Of course, if you want your 12-month forecast and character analysis and get 30% off with my special offer, please also see that link. And finally, if you want to sign up for your free daily horoscope, which will go through to your device each and every morning, please also see that link too. But that brings us to this month. So what does July hold in store? Hello Cancer and welcome to your monthly horoscope for July. What an exciting month is in store because there's a new moon in your sign on the 10th, joined by Mercury on the 11th. And that combination is going to give you a lot of get-go, especially for plans that have perhaps been trailing a little bit, not really seeming to move forwards with much traction. Why is that? Well, over the last couple of months, Mercury, the planet of communication, has been in Gemini, your 12th house. This is an area of reflection. So psychologically, you may have felt a little bit more reclusive, or it's possible that just some of your practical ideas were just not quite seeming to have the conditions to flourish. It is true at the start of this month that Mercury does square up with Neptune again. So if there has been something of a more psychological nature that seems to have been part of that uh, inhibition that you've encountered over the last couple of months, there could be a little bit flavor of it in the first part of this month. But once that new moon occurs and Mercury moves into your sign, you really do get a series of green lights to move forwards. A new moon is an opportunity for you to recast yourself and set your intention about what makes you individual. One of the things that frustrates me about uh, the way astrology is explained is that cancer people are often framed as being homemakers, nurturers, carers. Now those things may all be true, but you're a cardinal sign. And cardinality is about leadership. And it's about... Um, a very, it's a very powerful quality cardinality. And because you have the moon, your instincts can often guide you to manage things in a very successful way. So having the new moon is a permission really to re-engage with what makes you, you, not be quite so focused on the protection of others and more about going for it with the individual ideas that really excite you. And Mercury being in your sign can be part of that journey. But it is also true that in the first 10 days of this month, the sun in your sign forges a very charismatic link to Uranus. So you're being asked to think outside the box a little bit with that particular influence. It may mean in terms of your longer term future um, that you don't necessarily stick with a plan that up until now felt like the right thing to do because Uranus is very spontaneous but it's very fresh. It's about the truth and the 11th house where it is now is about your long-term future and what Uranus can do is strip away some of the preconceived ideas we have or desire to stick with what we absolutely know and be much more risk-taking. So it's a very galvanizing link between those two. So if ever you needed encouragement to be a bit different, particularly if you are someone who tends to be a bit more traditional in your mores, this is pushing you to really invest in what makes you totally unique and have utter confidence to go for it. Now there is a quarter moon on the second. It's possible that just as you do really push forwards in that very authentic way, that somebody who you have to deal with, it could be a boss, it could be an older relative, is just reminding you, well, this is the way it's always been done. So that can create a little bit of a, a resistance. But that doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't follow your heart. The sun and Mercury being in your sign and the Sun linking to Uranus is all pushing you to be much more daring. So it's really, really exciting. But 
As I mentioned before, Mercury has been causing some mischief in your 12th house, particularly through the retrograde. It may have seen you feel almost very isolated from others, even if it wasn't necessarily how they saw it. Your physical, emotional and spiritual reality may have been very tender. And because Mercury does square with Neptune right at the start of this month, that heightened sensitivity can be there. But I've yet to mention perhaps one of the most dynamic parts of this month, and that is that Venus, the planet of love and attraction, but crucially of money, is combining with Mars in the sign of Leo. They both love being in Leo. And so for the first three weeks of this month, if you want to draw to you sultry looks, some sensuality, some intimacy, or an improvement in your finances, these two really can help you. Is there a catch? Well, it may be because there is some resistance coming from Saturn towards the positions of Venus and Mars. And Saturn's in the part of your scope to do with where you have to work closely with others, where you perhaps need to have some kind of inter-relationship. Not dependence, but something that you share closely. And that could be a sticking point. Maybe someone feels that you should be more mindful of uh, being, as I said before, a bit more conservative in your approach. But there's so much about this chart that's saying, live in the moment, make the most of your individual talents, and you will reap the rewards. But the rewards aren't necessarily just going to be financial. It's about how you feel about yourself, because Venus and Mars are in the second house of self-worth. When those two are together, it just pulls, pulls so much goodness to us. People who have Venus and Mars conjunct in their natal horoscopes are often very, very sexy. So if you're wanting to activate a much more dynamic uh, sex life, this set of influence this, this month, providing you take the initiative and make things happen for yourself, step outside your comfort zone, can really bring a lot of joy to you. So the other thing with the new moon is it can be a great time to give yourself some kind of fresh makeover, new hair, perhaps uh, changing up your clothes a little bit, being a little bit uh, more in the moment. So even if you've had a particular way of dressing, perhaps just do something different. It can be so enlivening, you'll get lots of attention and people will be only too happy to give you lots of praise. Apart from perhaps somebody very close to you on the 17th, the quarter moon means that somebody very close to you could be a little bit jealous if you're trying something different. Or perhaps it's somebody who wants things to stay exactly as they always have been before, which of course is a complete illusion because nothing in life stays exactly as it is, but that might not be how they see it. So if you're pushing outside the box a little bit, they could push back a little bit. Well, hold on, we've always done it like this. So a bit of that from the quarter mid, the 17th in Libra. The 22nd sees the sun arrive home in the sign of Leo. The sun loves being in Leo. The sun is the heart of everything. It's the engine room of the planets and our pure existence. So moving into Leo for you, again, can give you a much greater desire to feel respected, to feel worthwhile, to feel worthy, and also to uh, engender a greater sense of self-worth too. But it can also make you more motivated about your finances. The great news also on the 22nd is the dust up between Uranus and Saturn, which has been going on since the second week of January and really has been tough. I think in your case, it's kind of like trying to make that new future that you want to develop work financially. I think that might have been one of the dimensions to it. Or how can you connect with others who are new and different when the old connections you had may in some ways be challenged by that. But that right angle between the two of them comes to an end on the 22nd. It does come back the last five weeks of this year, but for now we're all free. Phew, I'm certainly glad about that. And on the 22nd also, Venus, the glorious Venus, which has been really giving you that sense of allure all through the month in its combination with Mars, moves into the more quick-witted sign of Virgo. 
Now, obviously, technically, this is debilitated, but I can assure you, your words and the way you express yourself can captivate someone in the weeks ahead. The 24th does see a full moon in the sign of Aquarius. Full moons can bring into the open issues which are out of alliance, out of alignment, or they can bring forward results. If you have really been working very, very hard around those finances, good news can come through, particularly as the Aquarius full moon also links in the semi-sextile to Jupiter, the planet of hope, the planet of fortune in your sector of the ninth house. So that's linked to travel in some way or a contract. Could be very lucky for you at the end of this month. But on the 28th, Jupiter does invert into the sign of Aquarius. It's been in retrograde since the 20th of June, but now returns back to Aquarius. It will be coming back into your ninth house the last three days of this year and early in 2022 which is great because then there's going to be much more freedom to travel, which Jupiter governs, but particularly for you in the sign of Pisces, that's the ninth house of travel and higher education. The 28th, however, sees Mercury move into uh, Leo. So it moves out of your sign. So all that inventiveness that you've been investing since the 11th through to the 28th can render even more dividends. The 29th sees Mars catch up with Venus and move to the sign of Virgo. So your persuasiveness can be very, very strong. There can be the chance to interact with neighbors, siblings, short journeys, but your gift of the gab, if you don't mind me using that old fashioned expression, will be very strong as this month draws to a close. So you can see there's lots of glistening opportunities this month. There are a few challenges, but I think it's about you deciding that you're going to take control of the process. And once you do that, Cancer, really, the, 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 the sky is truly the limit for you.